This week on CrossFeed. Jailed over school choice. Pin the sin on the pastor. Is baby Jesus pro-life? A different kind of teacher sex scandal. And who's going to win, Jesus or Stephen Hawking? I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church of North Ridgeville, Ohio, near Cleveland. Hi, I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful De- uh, Randolph, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. Everybody, hope you had a good Father's Day. That's why we didn't have an episode last week. Yes, well, we had a working on the kitchen day, so... Uh, um, we're hoping, really hoping next weekend is it. We're, we're, we're waiting really, we're, we're kind of a holding pattern now, waiting for the, the, um, uh, countertop to be delivered. And after the countertop is delivered, then we can do the backsplash and then we can do the, um, final trim and then we're done. Nothing says romance like backsplash. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you've been married for almost 28 years, man. <laughs> hey, by the way, I noticed you had an anniversary. Yep. Is it you had an anniversary? Yep, that's right, 16 years. Yep, oh. she's put up with me that long. Pretty amazing woman. Is this a kissing book? No wonder her hair's turning gray. Anyway, <laughs> let's... Uh... <sighs> All right. You can hear... I don't know if you can hear it. Um, you might. You might see flashes behind me. Um, we're having a, we're under a severe thunderstorm warning right now. So, um, it's been kind of rumbling and flashing a lot today. So it's actually rumbling right now. I just thought that was your stomach. Um, <laughs> where should we begin here tonight? Um, let's uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's begin with this teacher. I like this, this, this story, this teacher. I like her lawyer. He's funny. <laughs> All right. So this is down in uh, in Florida. Uh, what's our city here? It just says Florida. It's in my Fox Orlando, so it's in the Orlando, Orlando area. Um, Southland Christian School. Her name is Jaresta Jan- J- Hamilton. And um, she, all right, long story short, she's a teacher at a Christian school. She got pregnant three months before her wedding. And uh, and she goes, gets married, comes back, and finds out she's lost her job. All right. Well, no, no, no. She she, she was uh, pregnant before she got married, uh, got married, uh, went to, um, was a, a Approached by the uh, no, not three weeks, th- not three months, three weeks, oh, um, and uh, um, had uh, um, it was approached to the school, talked to her about maternity leave. Somehow, another the subject came up, and um, she told him what had happened. And yes, I was pregnant when I got married. Yada yada yada, and they fired her for fornication. Yep. So, all right. This is, I, I just, okay, her attorney is helping her sue the school, claiming that her termination amounts to discrimination based on her pregnancy and marital status. All right, now here's his logic. If they're going to single her out because she conceived prior to marriage, but allow people to remain employed who conceived during a marriage, isn't that discriminating against her based on her marital status? <laughs> Uh, no, this is a question of morality. <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> um, I, okay, I like the school administrator. At this time, we're not, we're going to seek legal counsel, and I really don't feel comfortable making any comment, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's a pretty <laughs> smart thing to say. Yeah. Um, and, What's even worse, though, about this, I mean, is um, um, it says that they told the parents and students why she was fired. 
That's actually, if, if they're going to have grounds for a lawsuit, that's probably it right there. Oh, that's definitely it. That, yeah, it violated her, her privacy. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's nobody else's business. Right. Um, and this should be just, you know, the only thing you could say is no children were at any time in, in, in any type of danger. Right. You know, it was, you know, it's nothing, you know, with dealing with this, her, her performance or anything, yeah. uh, you know, but, but that's all we can say. Yeah. Um, so now it says that, uh, she, she claims the, or the, all right, um, letter sent to Hamilton from the school, which asked not to return, um, because of fornication, sex outside of marriage. It also claims that Hamilton knew about the school's moral stance through the employment application process. And her lawyer says, just a vague reference to upholding standards and purposes of the school. That's what they're going to, that's what they're going on as a morals clause. You know, I just realized something. Did this, oh, the school did notify, but did this, all right, did the school notify the families? Before the lawsuit or after the lawsuit was already, I mean, there's filed. Yeah. I, I don't know. It doesn't make, make a difference. They had, they had, I don't think they had a right to either way. Um, okay, Dale, here it is. Should she have been fired? <sighs> See, that's a tough call. All right. Um, they're, all right, as a teacher in a Christian school, she has a responsibility to um, to set an example to her students, right, and to lead a morally upright life. You're quasi evil. You're semi evil. You're the margarine of evil. It, I mean, it, you know, where do you where do you draw that line? Because ultimately, none of us lead a morally upright life. Should they have instead used this as an opportunity to talk about forgiveness? You do not live a morally upright life? Is that what you're saying? I'm a sinner. I mean, depends on where you draw that line. A pastor needs to be above reproach, and, you know, as far as any gross public sins, I, I think I'm pretty clear on that. Oh, okay. I was just, I was just wondering if there's anything in Austin <laughs> Former District President about. <laughs> Although I... I was you know asking for you know, some advice on finding um, a good recording of some Black Sabbath songs on my Facebook page last night, but you know. Okay, I, I just wondered, you know, you know. Anyway, um, you know, I just thought maybe some people would be, you know, twittering your district president. Uh, Dale Critchley said he doesn't live a morally upright life on on, on his podcast last <laughs> night. You might want to follow up with him on this. Uh, I do live a morally upright life. Just just to let you know. Um. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm thinking if I found out if there's a pastor got mar- newly married and they had a child nine months later and I found out that she was actually pregnant before she got his wife was pregnant before they got married. You know, that would probably be grounds for removal. Yes, it would. From our synod. You think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. So does that standard apply to teachers within our schools? Yes, it does. So my question in this, I I, mean, I don't know. This is just so, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, would, uh, it's a little, you know, uh, All right. where do you no. draw the line between sin, forgiveness? At which point does sin not allow you to remain in any kind of ministry. Yeah, I mean, you know, I you know, I was also thinking about if you're um if you're a student at one of like our Concordia colleges, and universities, and you get pregnant and you're not married or you're caught in um in fornication, right? That's ground for for dismissal. And you can be kicked out of school for that. I'm talking students, not teachers. I'm not mm-hmm. sure if that, you know, necessarily applies, but if, if we're going to hold our te- our students to a certain standard, then we should hold our teachers to an even higher standard. 
But that is an interesting question, though. All right. The standard is there, but how do you treat it? All right. I think this is a difficult decision anytime you're dealing with something like this because we want to model forgiveness. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I struggle with this, this, and I definitely, okay, even if she needed to be dismissed as a teacher, you know, the school really compounded it by telling the students and the teachers. I mean, the and the parents. That's that that goes beyond the you know that that there they definitely messed up. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, she probably does not have a. She would. She would. I don't think she'd have a case because courts do not like to get involved in in church, in church disputes like this. Mm-hmm. You know that they could say, you know, uh, sorry, uh, you know, we, we abide by well, what they call it, the fifth commandment. You know, uh, uh, you know, you will not commit adultery. This was, a, in our, a, our opinion, a very um, you know, open sin. Therefore, she needs to be removed. See, the other question I would have is, was there anything like going, you know, look, this is what happened. It was wrong. I know it was wrong. You know, we, we sinned. Mm-hmm. Um, or was it like, well, what are people getting so upset about? Right. Right. And exactly. And all we're hearing from is her lawyer. And her lawyer's right. trying to downplay it, but that's his job is to say, you know, right. not a big deal. All right. So this is a situation where we don't have all the facts because yeah, I can, you know, if, if she went in and say, you know what, we messed up and we shouldn't have done this. And, um, you know, I'm asking for forgiveness, you know, there may be a point now, the school's got to be careful that they don't come across as endorsing this sort of behavior or saying it's okay if word would get out. Now, three weeks right. before her wedding, that's the sort of thing that she could just sort of, they could say, look, just, you know, we want to help you out here and we can give you forgiveness. Um, we you know, there's a issue of setting a positive example here. It's not going to be really obvious to anybody because it's not like every child is born on their due date. Right. So yeah, you could just, if just, you know, don't ask, don't tell, you know, <laughs> yes. well, you know, the other side of this is, you know, um, gee, you know what? She couldn't have an abortion. Nobody would have known. You know, right. the, the, you know, here's, you know, I mean, I'm just looking at going, there's a lot going on here that I just don't feel really comfortable about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, I, um, I think I it's, just, it's, it's from our lack of, of information. You know? Probably, probably like too much information already, but it's really not <laughs> enough you know, for us to make a, you know, to make a, a, a sort of judgment call, you know, on what would you do in this situation? Um, right. I, you know, I know what I would do. I would just kick her out and be done with it, man. You know, and I would hold her up as a blatant hypocrite. Um, as a matter of fact, that's what happened to a Lutheran pastor recently. Um, let's just move on. All right. This was a story that was sent to us by uh, one of our readers or viewers. Yeah. Um, and Thank in fact, you, guy by the name of Kevin, and we'll talk later about his uh, email that he sent to us. Yep. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's read it now because since Go it's... Go ahead. All right. Um, this, is, this is from Kevin. He says, Hello, pastors. I'm a Facebook fan of CrossFeed and enjoy listening to the weekly videos. I grew up in the ELCA and switched over to LCMS about five or six years ago around the time that I was thinking of going to seminary myself. It may still happen at some point, but now it would be more of a second career thing. One of the reasons I ended up leaving the ELCA was the sexuality debate, which was something I didn't think should be debatable, and ended up leaving even before they had their big vote last summer. That is what first introduced me to your YouTube videos in the first place. I was interested in hearing some theological debate on the issue, and when I found out you were LCMS pastors, all the better. I've been tempted periodically to send in an article I found interesting, but now today I finally did it. Apparently, another pastor who sent out YouTube videos himself condemning the ELCA decisions was just very recently found to be attending support groups for persons struggling with same-sex attraction. 
course, the secular media will jump at the chance to show what a hypocrite anyone who speaks out about this issue is, and that the progressive path of the ELCA is what people who choose to stay religious should follow. Here's a link to the article on subject. And so, because he sent us the link, and it is a very good story, we're going to cover it. And so, um, this is just a reminder to all of our viewers and listeners that if you find an interesting story that you'd like to hear us talk about, send it to us, and it will go to the top of the list as we, uh, as we consider different stories. Uh, so this one specifically is, um, this is, is kind of a blog post talking about, uh, two different articles. One in, on the, it was a cover article of Lavender Magazine, which is a, um, a twice monthly GLBT magazine that, um, in Minnesota, but the gym gets, you know, shipped to him. <laughs> And um, the other article was uh, links to is in the USA Today. Uh, Associated Press article, but the link they have is to USA Today. Right. Right. So um, Uh. in a nutshell, you have a Lutheran pastor, um, Reverend Tom Brock at Hope Lutheran Church. And he is um, outspokenly... uh, it's spoken against the ELCA's movement toward uh, accepting homosexuality, um, and uh, and so uh, you know leans toward the conservative biblical position, and he um, was at a it was a support group for people who struggle with same sex attraction. No, we're not homosexual, but we are willing to learn and. There was somebody from this Lavender magazine was attending there secretly, um, posing as a uh, somebody coming to the support group for support when actually they were just a reporter uh, basically looking for dirt. Where is your honor, dirtbag? You are an absolute disgrace. So there's a few different things here. First of all, there's the whole question of this reporter's ethics. The, the whole point of these support groups is anonymity. It's not like this guy was out at a gay bar somewhere, right? This is a confidential support group. This person, this reporter, broke the confidentiality of, of the group, All right? The second thing is that this pastor went to this group for support as he struggles with this, um, with this attraction. But he's not practicing. He's going to the support group specifically to avoid practicing, to avoid mm-hmm. acting on his attraction. Right. Now, what's he speaking against in the, in the ELCA, where you are a palm, publicly accountable, lifelong, monogamous, same-sex relationship. You are actively gay. With a, with a, with a, with a, what's supposed to be considered a quote permanent unquote partner or actively lesbian. He is not. He struggles with an attraction, but he is not actively pursuing it. Right. There's a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, by his life, he is actually showing the sincerity of what he believes in saying, look, even though I do experience this attraction, I'm fighting against it. Right. I'm, you know, I'm not embracing the sin. I'm trying to avoid the sin. I'm seeking help to avoid the sin. To me, I see that as supporting his position. Boy, you know, so somebody comes along and says, well, you don't know what it's like. He could say, yes, I do know what it's like. And I still say it's wrong. I'm going to marry that man. So I, my hat's off to the guy. Right. So, in, I and, mean. and he, he says that there's, there's one quote for him that he fell into temptation um, it doesn't say he fell into sin. It says he fell into temptation. He says, I, I fell into temptation. I was weak uh, during a recent mission trip to Eastern Europe. 
All right. What does that mean? We have no idea. All right. He, you know, picked up a magazine or surfed the internet or we don't know. Or, you know, it could be hired a male prostitute. You know, it could be anything. Um, but the, you know, the whole thing with him is he's actively trying to avoid it. He is taking measures to stay on the narrow path. Right. So, um, so that really the point of the article is, um, sort of basically complaining or the, the point of this, this blog post is saying, um, hold on here. What is it that, you know, you've got this pastor that, that goes to this thing and all of a sudden it's the front page of your, um, of your gay magazine and the, the title is anti-gay Lutheran pastor protests too much. Oh, good grief. And, you know, oh, he's a hypocrite. Uh, no, he's not. All right. You know, this isn't Ted Haggard who was, you know, speaking out against it, but was actively involved in a relationship, um, you know, or something like that. This is a guy who's who's really, you know, taking his sin and mm -hmm. laying it on Jesus and saying, God, help me with this. All right. I was on time asked a question, you know. Um, you know, well, I was on time asked somebody, somebody asked me, he said, well, if he had a, a, a gay, you know, a pastor of the same sex attraction who was celibate, um, did I believe that for, that he should, should be ordained? And my my first response was, you know, how many pastors have we had in Missouri since 150 years? <laughs> my guess is we probably have. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know the you know we've never said the attract. Well, is the attraction in and itself sinful? There's this wonderful Lutheran doctrine of called you know, the big big Latin word here, folks, concupiscence, and that is the desire to sin. And we say that concupiscence in and itself is sinful. Mm -hmm. And I would put this on the same thing. Yep. That that the desire to sin, it's in this case, is itself sinful. However, it you know is still morally upright. Uh, I would say uh, uh, many straight pastors probably, you know, have um, noticed uh, young girl, uh, noticed women on the beach, um, and uh, the, the thoughts probably aren't, she. All right. <laughs> Gee. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Um. However. You know, is that sinful? It could be, um, but it's but nothing. But long as nothing's being acted on, right? Yeah, it's still sin that you need to take to Jesus and right. say, "Forgive me for this. Forgive me for for my desire to right. for, decide for with the desire. devil." All right, right. For sinful, uh, you know. I mean, I've had people tell me, you know, I fall, I've fallen in love with someone else. I'm saying that's nice. Don't act on it. Right. You're married. You know, it, the feelings will pass. You know, um, just to stay where you are. Feelings will pass. You know, are those feelings sinful? Eh, could be. But, you know, you, you don't compound this in by acting on them. Right. Right. So I'd see this as the same way. Um, you know, and he's doing everything he can. You know, I think, um, you know, I mean, I've known, um, pastors who are alcoholics and other things, um, but that we don't dismiss them from the ministry because of that. Instead, they're able to, um, you know, put some certain safeguards in their lives, uh, certain accountability plans, and be able to move forward. I think he's able to do the same thing. Sure. Yeah. Or for that matter, I mean, internet pornography is a huge, um, especially among pastors, because they have a lot of alone time in their office by themselves and computers right there and you know it's something that's easy for them to fall into right so, uh, recently interviewed a guy who wanted to go to seminary 
who, in his application, was forthright about that. Um, he also outlined his accountability plan to his wife, what they have done to deal with it. And we had no problem saying, okay, mm-hmm. you know, we, 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 you know, we're going to recommend you because he's done everything he can. Yeah. So, so, you know, I, I would say in this guy's situation that this whole idea of an accountability plan, um, would be a good thing for him. You know, to help to have people that can help him um, to avoid those situations or, you know, to avoid that temptation. Um, but it's a sin that he's going to struggle with. You know, everybody struggles with different sins. You know, I, I heard an interesting um, comment on the, this whole issue of same-sex attraction. And um, it basically said, look, we're all sinners. And so because we're sinners, we're basically hardwired to prefer anything but God's plan of one man, one woman married for life. You know? And so for some people... What is it that uh, we just had? Go ahead. You know, for some people it takes the form of homosexuality. For some people it's marital unfaithfulness. For some people it's pornography. For, you know, um, or whatever. Okay? Different people um, experience that sinful attraction in different ways. All right? It's all sin, but it's all what Jesus has died to forgive. Well, what is it that uh, we just read in, uh, uh, um, you know, even this morning, you know, that the sinful nature um, and the spirit fight against one another in our hearts? You know, so, but live by the spirit and you won't gratify the sinful nature. Um, let's see, let's see some, well, we talked about this woman uh, and being fired from a school. What if she was uh, 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 an ultra-Orthodox Jew? Okay. All right. This is an interesting story. And this is this is definitely one of those things that I'm a little nervous even commenting on it just because this is a, a, a very cultural, um, cult- culturally driven story. Um, this is in Israel. <laughs> and um, dozens of ultra-Orthodox Jewish fathers were jailed uh, Thursday evening, um, June 18th. Um, or before, because they refused to obey a Supreme Court school integration ruling. Uh, it was 35 fathers turned themselves into authorities. So, basically, these are um, Ashkenazi Jews, which is, uh, I did, I, you know, went to Wikipedia to find out what's going on here. And, um, they are of Eastern European uh, descent, or they're you know the the diaspora that was in uh, Germany, Poland, those areas, and then came back to Israel. So they're very conservative, and uh, then there's the other ones are uh, Sephardic Jews, uh, who are from the Middle Eastern and North African countries, all right, and um, in general, Ashkenazi Jews are more conservative than Sephardic Jews. And basically, different Jews follow different customs. And they, um, which set of customs you follow is according to uh, your family, your, your ancestors, your lineage. Okay, so you actually, you, you look at your ancestors and you, um, and you look at their, the way that they followed, um, these, their set of customs and then you followed that same set. Alright, so, like, secular Jews who come back into, uh, becoming religious Jews again, they actually have to go back and sort of trace their, ancestry and look at the customs of their family to figure out which set of customs they should follow. All right. So basically these people are saying, look, this you want to you want us to send our kids to this school that has people who follow different customs, all right? And and you know, with customs it goes on different teachings and that, all right? We want our children to keep our family customs because they're part of our family. 
And <laughs> so the, uh, the Israel Supreme Court, <laughs> because they would, these fathers wouldn't send their kids to the school, uh, sent them to jail. <laughs> And, uh, the mothers are allowed to stay home because somebody's got to take care of the kids. And, um, and there's a, our forefathers are missing subject to arrest. 22 mothers have been given a stay of arrest while the court considers a motion to exempt them on the grounds someone has to take care of their kids. All right. So this isn't a, a racial issue. They're all Jews. Um, this is just, it's a difference in customs. See, and this is, see, this is hard for us as Americans because number one, you can send your kids to whatever, you know, if you want to send them to private school, you want to send them to public school, you want to homeschool them, fine, whatever. Um, you know, as long as they're getting an education and they're meeting certain state requirements. And, you know, people like then, you are the you reason know, I was afraid to go to school as a child. So the, I, you know, this is really hard for us to understand. Um, from from that angle, if if you have different customs, you want to keep those with your family, then fine. <laughs> That's right. He can be taught. Right. I don't know. It's. I don't want to say. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I'm too American. Yeah. You know, I really am. I'm just like, you know, what's what's the big deal? Right, you 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 know you can't live with it, deal with it, move on in life. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just too I'm too American to really understand where these people are coming from. Right, I just it, you know it floors me that the Supreme Court is dealing with a school placement issue. Like, I know Israel's a pretty small country, but do they really have nothing better to do? <laughs> I mean, these are the big issues that they face. I mean, how about, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking that Israel, with all their problems with, uh, you know, the whole Israel, Palestine, you know, all, all the, 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 the combat mess that they're dealing with on a regular basis, on an ongoing basis. And they're worried about where these people are sending their kids, you know, just say, look, here's the, here's the minimum state requirements. You know, see to it that they're tested and send in the test results and we'll call it even. <laughs> but no, it's... That'd be my thing, you know, but I, again, but you have, you know, the state very involved with the church and the church very involved with the state here. Um, and I don't know. But yeah, I'm the same way. Hey, so what did you think about this uh, uh, Jesus in the womb poster? Oh, I love it. I love it, but I do think it's pro-life. Well, okay. You know, I, I think it's, um, okay. Well, first off, you, if you, if you click on the link, you'll see the picture. It's, it's, uh, uh looks like an ultrasound picture and it has a little halo on it and says he's on his way. Christmas starts with Christ. All right. And this is, th these ads are not out there yet. They're going to be in England. Um, you're going to see these, it's an ad campaign that's going to be from December 6th through what, the 24th, I think. Right. And it's done by churchads.net and it's called Ultrasound Jesus. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And this net, the National Secular Society has criticized the ad saying it gives the impression that it's politically motivated. Uh, it gives the impression that it was politically motivated that they are trying to put some sort of subliminal message. The image is too specifically associated with pro-lifers to be seen as a benign context. They should go back to Angels and Cribs, saying, ter says Terry Sanderson, the director of the National Secular Society. Uh, okay. <sighs> I don't think it's necessarily pro-life. Well, I don't think inherently. I mean... I do not... Okay, I, don't, I do not think overtly. it is specifically or inherently or... I mean, uh, um, no more than I think uh, the was it the Swedish photographer who learned to take how do you take pictures of the, of the children in the womb? Mm -hmm. Now those were very powerful pictures, and pro life 
groups, you know, I even when I saw them, I knew the girl, girl life groups were going to snap these pictures up and start showing them mm-hmm. um, because it makes their point beautifully. But that wasn't the point of the pictures. Right. You know, here, I, you know, I think it's the same thing. How many parents do you know who have the ultrasound of the kid and start showing it? Yeah. How, uh, better question. How many pro-choice parents do you know? that still like to show the ultrasound picture of their kids, right? Okay. I don't know. You know, I, I, you know, this is, you know, not something my wife, uh, you know, talked to people at work about, you know, but these women, you know, who are pregnant and stuff, they would say, oh, I, we had the ultrasound here. Take a look. And they would show them, you see these real grainy things that didn't look like much, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, and, and they would talk about, oh, that's so cool. Okay. It's the same thing. Uh-huh. You know, Anybody who has gotten pregnant in the last 15 years has the ultrasound. I mean, it is part of the, you know, uh, now we didn't, um, because when our kids were born, uh, Kelly and Josh were born, it was just beginning that whole thing. Mm. And, um, the doctor was like, you know, uh, there hasn't been a lot of research. We don't know really what the effect of this is on the kids. And if it doesn't have to be done, I just assume not do it. Hmm. Um, you know, he says, you know, I just, you know, if it, I, I'd rather be safe on, on, on safe in the conservative side. Okay. But now, okay, that's changed. I mean, everybody, the brother does it. Uh, you know, people have emailed me their, their ultrasound, you know, pastor, this yep. is our kid, you know, have ultrasound pictures of all of our kids. Now they've you got know. those 4D ultrasounds of that where you get, you get like a video. And it looks just like those pictures. Mm. It's it's forty. Like, yeah, it's color. I mean, obviously the computer adds the color yeah. because you can't get color from ultrasound. But I mean, it's it's like you got a camera with you know lighting and everything in the womb, and you get you get video. It's not cool. just a still. You can get that. Right. I, I think it's like cost extra or whatever. But we it but, wasn't okay, available. Okay, all this those. stuff going on. So. Yeah, that you would have an ad like this makes perfect sense. It fits right in with what any parent is doing. And I think it's cute, a little halo there over me. Um, I, I think it's funny, you know. I think it's catchy. Um, you know, for somebody just, you know, just you know, now, now the, 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 the Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child says uh, she thinks it's a wonderful help in changing people's minds in the abortion issue. Uh, the advert is saying that Jesus was alive as a person before he was born. Uh, they have a halo around his head. You don't have a halo around the head of a blob of jelly or a cluster of cells. Um, this is not a cluster of cells, but a human person. It just happens to be God, the God man, Jesus. It's all about the humanity of the unborn. Um, I don't think that's the, I think you can draw that, but that's, I think you can draw that from any ultrasound. Right. Right. You know, I, I, now, as a Christian, all right, I see this picture, and and for one, yeah, it's it's cute. It's like, oh yeah, totally. You could just you could just imagine, you know, if Mary had this, um, you know, of course, she with the whole stigma of having been <laughs> pregnant before she was married, you know, she wouldn't have been able to teach at that school either. But, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> um, but she, uh, you know, you could just you can almost picture her going look look you know and uh, uh instead we have she just you know walks into elizabeth's house and you know elizabeth goes oh my baby just leaped for joy in my womb because i'm in the presence of my lord you know mm-hmm. but um but i mean here's the thing yes as christians and this is a, this is a christian poster it's for churches it's you know really mm-hmm. i mean r- really the point of this is saying Hey, keep Christ in Christmas, uh, or in this case, Christmas starts with Christ, and you know, sort of go to church on Christmas is yeah, that's really what the message is. Okay, mm-hmm. so, um, you know, by this is Christians talking about it, and and the simple reality is that I look at this and I say, all right, was Jesus God while while he was in the womb? Well, of course he was. Was he man while he was in the womb? Yeah, he's. God and man at the same time, and you, you can't separate mm-hmm. the two. And and so, okay, well, if he is God and man at the same time, was he a person? Well, duh. You know? Right. 
And and so there, you know, you talk about why do Christians um, believe that that life begins at conception, right? Because if you don't, then what are you saying about Jesus? Maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out. You know, right? But I don't. I get. I believe it's inherent thing. I, yeah, um, the, even the guy who did, uh, put it out designed it. The company, the vice chairman of the company, designed it. Said, uh, you know, the, um, we thought that the scan was a very was a way of conveying that um, it's a modern currency and announcing a modern birth. Mm-hmm. And right. I think you know. Yep. And so I, I I thought it was cute, thought it was catchy, thought it was eye catching, um, thought it was funny there with the with the halo there. Um, well, after some of the really ridiculous, like those New Zealand you know posters and or billboards and stuff like that, this is a breath of fresh air. I love right. it because it's 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 not even keep Christ in Christmas. It's Christmas starts with Christ. It's it's not it's mm-hmm. actually it's it's actually gospel not, um, not law. It, well, it's kind of gospel, but it's not law. It's not hey, keep Christ at Christmas. It's like hey, look, God right. sends it's, this it's special gift. Like, you know, you know and it's kind of like you know, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, kisses start with K. You know, type, oh, type yeah. of thing. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, K jewelers. Um. But of course, now what would Stephen Hawking think? Uh, see, he would take him on. <laughs> he would take him on. <laughs> All right. So this is actually a big thing about uh, Stephen Hawking because he's um, stepped down. For, he was honored last week. Uh, this is dated June seventh, so it was a little before that. Um, he was honored at the World Science Festival in New York. Um. And last fall, he stepped down from the, uh, some science buff is going to get on me about this, the Lucasian, uh, professor of mathematics at Cambridge University, a position once held by Sir Isaac Newton. All right. So not named after George Lucas. <laughs> no. Uh, did you ever know? Okay. Folks. I'm, this is really off the subject, though. Though this chair was formerly one position at Cambridge was once held by Sir Isaac Newton. Think about this for a second. Somebody endowed a chair, and that endowment is still going on today. That's pretty impressive. You know, think about that. Uh, I was talking to a, a guy, and he was talking about how um, uh, he was at Cambridge, and the, the his professor was sitting in a chair that had been endowed for over 500 years. Um, you know, so really, seriously consider what you're doing with your wills. Because <laughs> you can, you know, I mean, seriously, you can do things like that that can have an impact hundreds of years later. It's just really cool when you think about this. Yeah. You know, this guy, whoever he is, died, and his, his, his endowment is still providing scholars today. Anyway, including now Stephen Hawking. So, which is so kind of were, ironic, given that Isaac Newton was a Christian, right? Well, I said he once held it. Didn't say he, um, uh, 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 you know, that the guy demanded. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Hawking, of course, has been is is a uh, a physicist, um, been just brilliant. Of course, he's been famous for writing his uh, book, a Brief History of Time, and also for playing poker against data in star trek <laughs> so uh the next generation so uh this other thing his other big claim to fame um and they asked him about god you know uh um says exploring the origins of time inevitably leads to questions about the ultimate origins of everything and what if anything is behind it all what could define god is thinking of god is the embodiment of the laws of nature however this is not what most people would think of that God, um, Hawking told Sawyer. They made a human-like being with whom one can have a personal relationship. When you look at the vast size of the universe and how insignificant an accidental human life is, is in it, that seems almost impossible. No, that seems most impossible. Um, he says... Um, there is a fundamental difference between religion, which is based on authority, and science, which is based on observation and reason. Science will win because it works. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. 
All right. You realize his statement here about how accidental human life is, that, that God could be a certain way, that that's impossible? That that statement is based on authority, on his authority, which is and not based on, uh, on, sorry, on observation and reason. A very nice brain. He just contradicted himself. Okay. All right. Now Stephen Hawking's a smart man, and I would hate to debate him. Okay, because like I look like a babbling idiot next to him. All right, and I acknowledge that the guy's a genius. Okay, but he just. You know, and, and I don't know, maybe we got to cut him some slack because he was in a Diane Sawyer interviews and, and, you know, and, and so he was kind of stuck thinking on his feet and, um, you know, and he just, uh, you know, really hadn't thought this through. Okay. But this is, you know, he's saying that oh, it's impossible for God to be, to have a certain kind of nature, for there to be a God of a certain kind that humans can have, uh, um, can have a relationship with. Based on what? Based right. on your comparison with other gods? For, yeah. Well, that, 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 that's, that's one thing. The other side is just, um, they made a human like being with one, with one whom can have a personal relationship. Um, hmm. So, where are the other two parts of you, um, uh, Dale? <laughs> yeah, right. The Trinity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, God. I mean, Trinity's just like us. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I don't, I don't know too many people who are omniscient, omnipotent, eternal, um, omnipresent. Um, you know, omnipresent. Um, in the whole universe. You know, I mean, I just don't know too many people who fit this definition. Right. I mean, yes, we speak in some anthrop anthropomorphic, you know, descriptions. You know, it talks about God's right hand and, you know, his powerful arm that leads things down. But he's not a, a human-like. The God of Scripture is not human-like at all. No. He's completely other. Um, yeah, right. And, and the only reason that we, he's described that way is because our frail human language cannot uh, really encompass, you know, who he is and, and, you know, and, and describe him properly. Well, forget our frail human um, mind uh, uh, language. Our frail human minds can't well, comprehend right. what God is like. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's, that's the point of the Bible, of course, you know, this authority that he complains about. Well, Okay, so God is a is above our ability to comprehend. He's you know he, he's he's above the universe. Okay, he existed before there was such a thing as time. All right, he put time in motion. He put space time in motion. Okay, so and he still exists outside of time. Right. Okay, and so so now we're gonna he's gonna um say hey by the way here I am. <laughs> And I love you. And um, and you know, and even even when we talk about God's love, and and like His love is so far beyond our ability to explain or describe love. I, I was having a discussion this week with an atheist friend of mine about uh, justice, God's justice. He said what happened to Jesus on the cross was not justice, that there's there's no way that you can call that justice that the whole idea of him fulfilling the law, that there's no, mm -hmm. there's no justice in, um, in explaining or in, in, um, in the, the, the just dying for the unjust. And I said, well, you're right. What, what happened to Jesus on the cross was not fair. All right. That absolutely should not have happened. Um, you know, in a, in a, in our, our understanding of justice. All right. But it was mercy. It was mercy for us. Okay. But, and the problem is, according to how we understand reality, mercy and justice are, oxy, are there, you can't have both at the same time. Right, God found a way to do both, but it's so absolutely amazing that it's beyond our ability to comprehend. 
and but he's God, you know. And it's like, well, and I've I've heard this argument. And the funny thing is, I've heard it from atheists in both directions. All right, if he's God, if if God exists, then he should be above and beyond our ability to comprehend if he's really God. Okay, but then as soon as he does something that they don't comprehend, they get mad. <laughs> it's like, which is it? <laughs> you, you know. That we should just be happy that he actually is transcendent, that he actually does stoop down, you know, to talk to us. And, you know, that, you know, and, and Hawking even mentions how accidental human life is, which, you know, it, it, it's really, it's an amazing accident. You start looking at, um, at, at time windows in order to have a, a planet that can support life and you talk and and not just life as we know it life period, because life can only exist under certain um, conditions, right? Any kind of life, right? Just because of that only, um, only certain elements are able to, uh, to support life and and the rest of them that they break up or whatever, they don't have the necessary, um, uh, properties to support the, the complexities required for life, right? In order, you've got to have, um, a, a planet at just the right time in that planet's life cycle that, that life has to appear. And, and I mean, like you start looking at the, the things that have to, everything has to fall into place at just the right time within very small time windows. And I mean, the funny thing is when they first came up, um, with this concept of the Big Bang, the atheists were all against it because they said, no, that's not enough time. If, if we don't have eternity, um, of, of time, then we've got some real problems because we don't have enough time for evolution and, you know, and all this stuff to happen. And the more they, they look at, uh, time frames, the shorter those time frames get. They're, they're finding photosynthesizing plants earlier and earlier in, in our planet's history and things like that. It's like, wait a minute, they didn't have time to show up according to, um, the evolutionary understanding. And, and so, you know, as Christians, we can look at it and regardless which time frame you use, whether you're a young earther or an old earther, either way, we, we can go, um, God works within his time frame and we're good. <laughs> So instead you're left with, um, with, it says, uh, the biggest mystery that Stephen Hawking would like solved, I want to know why the universe exists, why there is something greater than nothing. Well, we know the answer to that, but he doesn't want to hear our answer. <laughs> right? God created the yeah. universe because he's a God of love. Well, and, and the question of why, if you are, if there is no God, there is no why. Right. So why, why because, even ask the question? Right. Because there, 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 there is, you know, there just is no why. Um, where did I read it? Uh, you know, if you don't believe in God, you condemn your life to a life of meaning, uh, the, the universe to meaninglessness. Because there's just no why. Just... Right. Right. And I've heard people to say, well, I define meaning. I, I have meaning in my life by, uh, uh, you know, being nice to people or, or enjoying my family or, or whatever. Okay. But that's an arbitrary, well, I'm choosing this to apply meaning, but, but I acknowledge that that's, there's no real meaning. Uh, that that's just, that's how I get through the day without going insane. Right. As human beings, we clamor for meaning. Why? Because there is meaning. Right? There's no point in asking why if there is no why. So, you know, and what it comes down to, even from a, a physics perspective, the universe came into being. Therefore, it had a causal agent. All right? And you can't point to physics because the laws of physics didn't exist until the universe came into being. 
All right. If you if you believe <coughs> in the Big Bang, there was no physics before the Big Bang. So what caused it to happen? All right? They're stuck on that. And and they can't answer that question. There had to be a causal agent above and beyond outside of our universe. And we say, let me tell you about him. <laughs> Actually, really, God is this almighty mini-vac computer that just got scattered throughout the cosmos. <laughs> My oldest daughter is reading Hitchhikers right now. Um, now, this is actually... Um, the Last Question uh, by Isaac Asimov. Uh, okay. And oh, right, in which, right, right. In which the question was, you know, what happens when the last star burned out? And, you know, and, you know, and, and this mini-vac computer has been working on this and working on this and working on this thing. And at the end of it, he finally says, the answer, let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. It's a really cool short story that he wrote there. One of his best short stories, I've always thought. But uh, so, you, so your daughter's reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, fine. She's been wanting to for a while, so it's um, it's a thing that makes your mind just kind of go, okay, this is this is weird. Um, of course, you know that was written, just just let her, that was written on a Macintosh computer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he got one of the very first Macintoshes there was in in Britain. He was. But it's interesting. If you read his uh, last book, um, so long it makes for all now. the fish. But it was or later on. You mean no, 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 no. no. You mean like well, there's Dirk Gently's holistic it's very, agency. His then, very, very last book that they actually rescued off his Mac, but with a bunch of other essays and stuff. And he's got this one thing which he says proves evolution with uh, uh, by computers and stuff. And the funny thing is, that you're like, but everything that you're talking about had a designer behind it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, all, all, you're, all you all you managed to do is just argue in favor of intelligent design. <laughs> I see that over and over again. Oh well, we've designed these robots, and and these robots are actually able to um, to in in a, to learn or, or evolve or, or whatever you know terminology <laughs> they want to apply to it. Like, but you. Design the robots to be able to yeah. do this. <laughs> you, you didn't prove all you proved is that you need a designer for this to happen. Right. Unless you could so, throw a bunch of transistors into a box and shake it and come up with something that could do this. <laughs> Even then, you've handpicked work, your your pieces. <laughs> but but you know so. using talking about hawking it it goes back to the old joke where where man says you know we can do anything we don't need god we can anything god can do we can do and and god says okay fine let's try this out all right create life and man says okay fine we just take some dirt and god says hold on a minute get your own dirt obscure joke talk to your parents <laughs> so uh, okay uh, hey, folks, this kind of brings us to the end of the show for tonight. Um, thank you all for watching and things. We will not be here next week. We're going to be celebrating um, the freedom that we have as uh, Americans for the 4th of July yep. and also thanking God for our servicemen and women. Yep. Um, so uh, enjoy yourselves and uh, have a good, happy, joyous, and safe Independence Day weekend. Yeah, yeah, and, and I just I want to reiterate uh, the part about Thanking God for our servicemen and women. We actually have a handful, uh, at least that the watch our show, and um, and so I want to thank them specifically. And uh, but I also want to encourage all of our viewers and listeners to just stop and, and thank God for them uh, for all of the freedoms that you enjoy. Um, uh, now I, I know also that there's people in other countries like China um, that are probably not real appreciative of their servicemen and women. Um, or the, especially the ones that are forcing them to watch this stuff and not let anybody find out. Um, but those of you in the United States, which is most of our viewers and listeners, um, you know, take a moment and thank God for them. And, uh, you know, ask God, is there anything I can do 
to support them and encourage them. And, um, you know, and if, if you see anybody that you know is involved in the service, stop and thank them. You mm-hmm. know, it's just, I, you know, reading stories like this, uh, you know, these Israeli fathers who are being told by the government what they're allowed to teach their kids and what school they have to send them to and all that kind of stuff. And I think, wow, wow, we are so blessed. We've got it so easy. So, yes, that we are. And, um, so, uh, God take care of you all. God watch you. God bless you. And God give you his grace. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless. God bless.